What's up, guys? Pyromaniac720 here, and I have for you today a couple more battles from the Oris in game battle spot doubles ladder. So, first thing you may notice is that my screen is finally normal sized, which is super exciting because I have been struggling to figure out how to make it normal sized for quite some time now. Um, so, it's finally like not squished anymore, so I'm really excited about that. Um, anyway, we're going to jump onto the ladder here with a rating of 1741. Uh, using the same team as yesterday with Absol, Mega Absol, Mega Venusaur, Smeargle, Infernape, Hydragon, and Talonflame. So, I believe we won one and lost one yesterday. So, hopefully we can take two wins today and hopefully we can use some Mega Absol. Um, as we're playing Chris Orr from Mexico with a 1735 rating, so very close to our rating. Um, <clears throat> Chris's team is Metagross, Weavile, uh, Togekiss, Landorus, my Lodic and Kangaskhan. So two potential Megas here with the Kangaskhan and the Metagross. Um, typically when you see, two, you see dual Mega teams, you don't see two Megas that are kind of the same. Like Metagross and Kangaskhan obviously provide much different coverage, but their roles on teams are typically pretty similar. They're both fast, bulky, hard-hitting physical attackers. Um, a lot of times for dual Megas, you'll see something like, you know, maybe something slow and bulky, and then maybe something fast that hits hard. Kind of like on this team, I have Absol, Venusaur. Absol is kind of my fast. Go get him type attacker. Venusaur is my more like chill type attacker. Um, but anyway, so I am thinking that Absol actually would be pretty good here. Um, if my opponent, so if my opponent brings Metagross, like, I don't know, this team, Venusaur basically does well against the Milotic and the Landorus. And so basically half the team Venusaur does well against, the other half Venusaur gets pretty, I guess not destroyed by, but doesn't do great against. And I think that, um, I think that Absol will actually do better. So, I'm actually going to lead Infernape and Smeargle. I'm going to bring Absol in the back and Hydreigon. I think Hydreigon's going to be really good in this match, especially if I can get Tailwind up. Wait, did I bring Talonflame? <laughs> JK, I didn't bring Talonflame. Sorry, that will not be... I didn't think that through. I should have brought Talonflame over Smeargle. That would have made a lot more sense. I'm guessing you want to see Weavile Metagross or Weavile, Weavile Mega probably for my opponent, or maybe Weavile Landorus. Um, but now that I get the screen issue figured out, I'm probably going to get my girlfriend to make me an overlay since she been saying she wants to. So I see Togekiss and Landorus, which is a really good lead for my opponent. Because um, of course you can just spam Earthquake and avoid it and follow me so I don't actually attack him. However, I do have Fake Out Pressure with Infernape. So I can just fake out the Landorus and Dark Void right off the bat. And I'm assuming this Togekiss isn't faster than my Smeargle unless it's Scarfed. In which case I could be in a load of trouble. Landorus protects, so it's actually really good to know that because that means Smeargle actually might be faster. As we actually see a double protect. Huh. Interesting move for my opponent. As I just Dark Void into nothing. Let's see if Moody gives me a speed boost. Special defense, okay. And an attack drop. All right, that's fine. So I'm actually going to switch out Infernape for Hydragon. And I'm going to just Dark Void. Especially because Infernape's intimidated right now, so it's not going to do like a ton of damage to either Pokemon. And like I said, I see, unless this is a timid Togekiss, I'm going to outspeed it. So worst case scenario here would be I miss Dark Void and I get hit with a Dazzling Gleam. Because this, of course, is going to bring Smeargle to my Sash, as it does. And Dark Void goes off, hits at least one of them, hopefully it hits the Togekiss. Hits both, good. So, that is very good news for me. So I'm guessing that this Landorus either has Yachi Berry, as you see an accuracy from Smeargle. I'm guessing that this Landorus has either a Yachi Berry or a... Um, uh, Focus Sash. So, I'm actually going to switch out Smeargle for Absol here. I really want to get Absol in the game. The question is, does this Togekiss have Dazzling Gleam? If it does, then I could be in trouble because I do have two Dark Types with Hydragon and Absol. Um, as Landers actually switches out, so I could have stayed in and just Dark Voided as Kangaskhan comes in. Oh...
Guys, that Dark Pulse is a huge chunk of damage to Kangaskhan, which is actually very good for me. So the question is, do I want to keep Hydra in? I think the answer is yes. So I'm going to Dark Pulse to Kanga and just Mega Evolve and protect with Absol. Um, so we, of course, see the Met Kang's got Mega Evolve. So I don't know. Maybe that Metagross has Assault Vest. Maybe it's just another Mega. I'm not really sure. Um, maybe we might not find out this match. And, of course, Kangkhan does Mega Evolve first, which indicates that it's probably max speed. Absol's only base 70, but max speed base 70 without speed like a bulky Kang. As he goes to the Fake Out, oh, perfect. So I knock out the Kangaskhan, which is a huge... I mean, most things are a huge threat to Absol, but... Um, and I'm guessing that... I'm going to say Tokus is going to wake up here. And it does. Does it Tailwind? It Dazzling Gleams. So that is very bad news. But this is better news, because now I get a free switch into Infernape. As my Lodic is my opponent's last Pokemon. So the question is, is Togekiss going to protect? And I'm going to say yes. So I'm actually going to fake out... Alright, so... I'm going to fake out my Lodic, just in case it's Assault Vest, because I do see a few of those. And I'm just going to Swords Dance with uh, Absol. And I think Absol, like I said, can be really good, but... I think it really needs like the Swords Dance, because now I can spam plus two Rock Slides, which of course are excellent. And of course, I still have that Landers, or my opponent still has that Landers sleeping in the back, so that's really good for me too, which has taken no sleep turns yet. Awesome, my opponent actually withdraws Togekiss, so I'm guaranteed to get this Swords Dance off right now. And my opponent didn't protect with my Lodic. Great. As my opponent reveals leftovers on the Milotic. Definitely a common item on my Milotic, I believe. Citrus, leftovers, like recovery items. So I'm going to, uh, like I said, this Landers is guaranteed to sleep this turn. So I'm going to close combat and sucker punch the Milotic. Which does a nice chunk. And the fact that it doesn't have Citrus is great because now Close Combat's going to KO. Which it does. This also means my opponent can no longer Shuffle Intimidates. Which is also really nice. And Landorus, as I expect to say, is asleep. So I really did get rid of this Landorus because it is faster than my Smeargle. Um... But this Togekiss can also be a problem. So I'm actually going to... Flare Blitz Togekiss, and I'm going to Rock Slide. Let's see if Togekiss protects. I'm honestly expecting a potential double protect from my opponent here. Togekiss goes for the follow me. That's fine. I was double targeted anyway. As Rock Slide comes out from myself, which is going to target both Pokemon at plus one. Does a huge chunk of damage to that Togekiss, which does have the Citrus, which explains why my Lodic had the leftovers. Oh, if this lender stays asleep, I'm going to be in really good shape. If this lender wakes up, I lose. Alright, good. So this is fantastic right now. Because I can just Rock Slide KO the Togekiss and just Flare Blitz the lender. So as long as I hit both Pokemon with Rock Slide, I win. Alright, Togekiss protects. Let's see if... So lender that means lender isn't protecting. So it just protects, and I hit, yes. Which is a huge chunk of damage. My Flare Blitz goes out and hits the Landorus. Awesome. Alright, so... 
Looks like this one's over then because I can just flare blitz the Togekiss and I'm just going to sucker punch it for good measure. Let's see if plus one sucker punch is enough to KO. And it is. E wow. So that just shows how strong, like, Togekiss is a pretty bulky Pokemon. That sucker punch, that plus one just KO'd it from like, I don't know, 35%. Like, that's pretty good. Um, so we get our first win with Mega Absol, which is incredibly exciting because... Like I said, I think Absol can be good with the right support. As you can see, Smeargle there was really clutch, being able to put both Pokemon to sleep and put me in a good position. Um, also, I think predicting that fake out into the Absol was really big, because uh, it allowed me to KO the Kangaskhan, which could have caused me a lot of issues. All right, so with that win, we should be up over 1750. And I would not like to save that battle video. So, in party. So like I said, like my opponent's team really wasn't well prepared for, I guess not, they weren't not well prepared, but Absol was able to do well against this team, which is what I really wanted to see. As we actually jumped to 1756, um, with a record of 79 and 54, so... Another one here will put us at probably 1770, you know, depending on who we play. Takes a second to find the opponent, so... Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people actually say that Absol is the worst Mega Evolution, and I really do disagree with that. I think Absol... I think most Mega Evolutions definitely have a spot, as we're playing... David, who's actually Quijibo on uh, Nugget Bridge, who I've actually played a few times in the Nugget Bridge Live Tournament. Um, but I think Absol definitely has a spot on a lot of teams. I think it just... It's not... You can't really use it as a primary Mega. I think it's a really solid secondary Mega. Um, and this match is a perfect example of that. I'm not going to use um, Absol here. Um, of course, I'm, I'm presuming that Scarf Landorus um, doesn't do too much to the Rotom, because well, I guess they could try, if the Rotom tried to burn me, I'd, I'd bounce it back. But... Um, doesn't really do much to the Amoongus, although I do bounce back Spore. Um, doesn't do anything to the Scrafty. Loses to Gardevoir and loses to Heatran. So um, Venusaur definitely looks really good here because Venusaur beats all these Pokemon barring... Um, Heatran it can beat 1v1, um, assuming the Heatran doesn't have sub. Um, and Gardevoir it has trouble against because of the Psychic type attacks, but... I have Talonflame and Infernate for physical attackers, so... Um, my opponent really doesn't have a good way to stop me from setting up... Um, setting up that, that thing I want to set up. Dark Void. So I'm going to lead Infernate Smeargle again. Um, with Venusaur in the back. And I think... Hydra or Talonflame? I think actually Talonflame, to be honest with you. Talonflame hits... Um, Gardevoir, Scrafty, and Amoongus really hard, so um, definitely opting for that over um, Hydreigon, although Hydreigon would be really nice to hit the Heatran with an Earth Power, but I think that uh, Infernape could take it on itself with a close combat. Uh, or I could just, you know, rack up some chip damage. Or like I said, I could just Leech Seed it as well. So David is issuing a challenge. Sends out Scrafty and Gardevoir. Interesting lead duo because I'm assuming this Gardevoir isn't max speed timid, although I do know some people lead that, and I'm assuming it's Mega. Um, as it traces my blaze. Um, and gets the Intimidate off, unfortunately. So I'm also assuming that the Scrafty has Lumberry, so I'm actually gonna Mega Evolve and fake out the I'm not gonna Mega Evolve. I'm gonna just fake out the Scrafty and Dark Void. So fake out. Uh, and Dark Void. Um, another play I could do is... So I really like having... So I run Faint on my Smeargle, as you may have noticed in yesterday's videos. Or video battles. Um, and I think it's a really good move because a lot of people will double protect to burn my Fake Out. Um, but I can just use Faint and then hit him with a Close Combat or a Flare Blitz, which is also really nice. Um, so I'm... Yeah, like I said, I'm fully anticipating... Um, a fake out from Scrafty, and then a protector, maybe a, an attack. If it's max speed timid, then it's going to outspeed my Smeargle, so we might see a hyper voice. 
which would of course most likely bring me to my sash. And we're not going to see the protect from uh, Gardevoir, so it's not max speed timid either. So I'm going to hit hopefully at least a Gardevoir. Worst case scenario here, I miss Gardevoir. I hit it though. I hit both. Let's see if this Scrafty has that Lumberry. And it does. Alright, so Gardevoir takes his first turn of sleep. So I'm actually going to... Oh, please don't give me a speed drop. Evasive. This... Nice. So I'm actually going to Mega... I'm going to... Sorry, not Mega Evolve. I'm going to transform... So I'm going to switch out Infernape into Venusaur. Or no, I'm going to switch out into Talonflame. And I'm actually going to transform into this uh, Gardevoir. I think having a Mega Gardevoir right now would be really awesome. So like, this is going to put me in great shape because I'm assuming my opponent's going to um, Drain Punch one of my two Pokemon with Scrafty. Or maybe even just Protect, I don't know. Some Scrafty can pick up and Protect. But if it if it Drain Punches the Gardevoir, that's going to be hilarious. Yeah, that's going to do nothing. Does 12 damage. 22 damage, I can't do math. 18 damage. Oh my god, I'm a math major. As Gardevoir stays asleep, which is fantastic. Um, so right now, I'm actually going to have, um, Tailwind and, oh, it's a Trick Room. Interesting. So right now, I'm actually going to get Tailwind and Hyper Voice, which means I'm going to have a nice Hyper Voice talent. Play. So it's actually interesting that my opponent didn't protect that turn one, um, because where is it's Gardevoir knows Trick Room? I'm assuming that it's pretty slow. Um, so I thought maybe he should have protected and... Maybe just not. Maybe just gone for a drain punch on Smeargle and hope that I missed and didn't fake him out. I don't know. It was a weird turn. But thank God I put him to sleep because Trick Room would have made this a lot tough. This match a lot tougher. And that's how you got some speed drops. Uh, but I definitely have a ton of offensive pressure right now on my opponent. Um, Scrafty, of course, threatened by the Hyper Voice and the Brave Bird. Um, and I don't think. I mean, unless my opponent has Heat Train in the back, my opponent does not have a good switch into Hyper Voice. Um, let's see if we're going to see the Heatran come in here, though. Yeah, we do. And Scrafty switches out, too, so I get a free Hyper Voice off on both Pokemon. As Landorus comes in. So this is great, because now I have Tailwind up. The question is, though, is this min speed Gardevoir? If it is, I don't know if I would speed under Tailwind. But this Hyper Voice should do a nice chunk to this Landorus. Wow, that did a lot. Not even a crit either. Um, I'm going to assume that this is sub Heatran. So I'm going to Brave Bird the Landorus and just Psy Shock the... Alright, so I'm going to knock out Landorus and I'm going to get a Psy Shock off. So I'm going to go for Psy Shock over Hyper Voice because uh, Hyper Voice of course is four times not very effective and... Side shock's only two times not super effective, so I should do at least a decent chunk of damage. I mean, not a decent chunk, but like more of a chunk. See, this was the issue with not. Oh, well, I actually did a lot more than I thought. If my opponent does sub. I see what comes in here. If Scrafty comes in here, I'm going to be in really good shape. Um, because I can just quick guard and hyper voice. Um, so, of course, like I said, I really do need to break this sub because um, I could close combat with Infernate, but if the sub's not broken, he's just going to Earth Power me, presumably, for a KO. Uh, especially because I don't have Focus Sash on my Infernate. I have Razor Fang. So, like I said, this is really fantastic. Um, I wonder if this has Earth Power or uh, Flash Cannon. Uh, but I'm going to Quick Guard. And once again, just Hyper Voice, which actually is going to avoid the sub, although it's not going to do a lot of damage. Side Shock, like you noticed, did a lot more damage than Hyper Voice did. Um, but this would bring it to a 4v2, and it's going to be kind of a tough 4v2, though, because um, because of that. I mean, he trains a Pokemon against the team I have right now that could easily beat me 4v2, like 4v1, especially behind a sub, because I just don't really have a great way to beat the sub. 
Let's see if this Scrafty does carry Protect, though. So I Quick Guard. This is going to block any Fake Out. So I'm guaranteed to KO on the Scrafty this turn. As it does go for the Fake Out onto uh, Gardevoir. Smeargle. Oh, that's actually did a decent chunk to the um, Heatran. Let's see if we see a Heat Wave come out. As we do see the Flash Cannon. Interesting move. As it actually picks up the KO. Oh, critical hit. Okay, I was going to say, it's very surprising considering this Gardevoir has Trick Room. I was about to bring in Smeargle, but I forgot that Smeargle was Gardevoir. Um, so the question is, is this going, this thing going to protect? And I think the answer is no. Um, I'm going to Brave Bird. I'm just going to knock out Gardevoir right now. Because Gardevoir is a much bigger threat to Venusaur in the back than Heatran is. Um, and I definitely think he's going to protect the Heatran. Normally I would just fake out the Gardevoir, but I am concerned. Oh, he protects with Gardevoir. Oh. Just doubled into that one. That's going to be game. Oh, he heat waves. Oh, he doesn't have Earth Power. So this is actually going to be an interesting finish. So I can actually double into this Gardevoir now, and Infernape should be okay. As my Tailwind Peter's out, not that it matters, because both my Pokemon are, of course, considerably faster than his Pokemon. Um, so anyway, once again, I mean, I don't really see a scenario where Flare Blitz plus Brave Bird doesn't KO this Gardevoir, especially where a Flash Cannon just did. Oh my lord! That is unbelievable! That's game. Oh my god, I got the crit. Thank god. That was huge. I can't believe how little that heat wave did. Or that, uh... That thing I just used was. Um... So now the question becomes... Do I taunt? I really can't. So I'm going to... So like I said, I can win a 1v1. So I'm actually going to Tailwind here. And Close Combat. Let's see if he protects. He does finally use Protect. So one thing I could do is taunt him. Um, the issue with taunting him is I don't break the sub and then Venusaur is kind of screwed. And this actually really sucks because now I... Like, Brave Bird's just going to do nothing. I don't want to Flare Blitz power, fire, power up the fire moves. I can't really switch out anything because Venusaur is not Mega Evolved yet. So I think maybe leaving Venusaur out and taking Hydreigon would have been a much better option. Um, so I'm going to Brave Bird... And close combat. I mean, I guess right now what would be ideal is if <laughs> if somehow Brave Bird broke sub, which it's not going to after I just saw what it did to that Gardevoir. Crit? Nope. So this is going to break the sub and bring up my Venusaur. Uh, but the nice thing is about that last turn is Tailwinding is I'm going to get a Leech Seed off before he's able to set up sub. But ideally, he needs to miss this heat wave and he doesn't so um, I'm definitely in trouble here I mean it's pretty nice that he didn't have um, earth power but at the same time if he had had earth power over flash cannon then uh, my smear would have stayed around a lot longer I mean if my smear stuck around I could have switched it out and then transformed into my Mega Venusaur. And like double leech seeded him. And then he would have been in trouble. Because he couldn't take out two Mega Venusaurs. But like I said, I am faster. He's probably going to protect here. Which I think I actually might saw at my Tailwind. Um, but like I said, he does have that Trick Room option. So maybe he's a slower... Maybe he's got no investment into speed. Which means Venusaur without speed. Because I did run four speed on mine.
as he does protect. I do believe I should have one more turn of Tailwind, although I'm not... So I Tailwinded when he protected. So I should have, I'll have one more turn of Tailwind. Awesome. <laughs> I wish I had Sleep Powder and Leech Seed right now. I just can't. If I miss Leech Seed, it's over. Because he's just going to set up Sub. Like I said, Venus was such a bulky Pokemon that... Alright, could I hit it? So Venus was such a bulky Pokemon that I can win this in a 1v1. If he goes right for the Flash Cannon, he's not, he's not going to set up a Sub. It actually did a pretty nice chunk of damage, although I'm going to be healing back a lot from this Leech Seed. So overall, I'm going to lose... Looks like 42 health. Oh, I don't think I'm going to win this. I need some, some big luck. And I really can't protect here to heal back more because if I protect and he sets up sub, I'm in big trouble. I guess ideally he'd set up sub here because then I could just attack him. He is faster still. Really surprising. Oh, wow, I got a lot. As Giga Drain does nothing back. Yeah, so definitely that Flash Cannon crit was really big. And also, of course, the leftovers are really big right now. Yeah, so this should end the quite the stall match. This match has actually already gone almost 15 minutes, so... Really smart of my opponent to keep using flash cannons over heat waves because flash cannons, or heat waves of course don't do as much thanks to thick fat and of course the flash cannons will never miss. Alright, so I'm slowly chipping away though. That's the nice thing right now. And he's really smart not setting up subs too because that would of course also just take away a unnecessary amount, you know, 25% of his health. Which he wouldn't be gaining back fully. As he goes for the heat wave. Alright, I don't know if I agree with that play, but... Oh, that knocked me out? Okay, that's... I definitely didn't expect that. I gotta calc that. That doesn't really make any sense to me. Venusaur... 252... 100... Verse... Heatran... 252 modest heat wave singles. I don't know how that did so much damage because 252 plus Heatran heat wave to my Mega Venusaur single target does max 45%. And I was over 50, so I don't I don't know how that just happened. Maybe this Venusaur spread isn't as I think it is. Um, but anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's battles. Um, I think they were both really good battles um, and definitely showcased the versatility of both Absol and Smeargle. Um, so I'm probably going to be using this team for the rest of the week, um, for a little while at least. Um, if you want to see any changes made to it, uh, let me know. Uh, until next time, guys. Bye.